this is a quick run through of how the Wartmonster brewery functions. You have a control panel, PID that controls the hot liquor tank, second PID that controls the mash tun. This runs in on-off mode, this runs in PID mode. Both have RTD sensors attached to them that run to temperature probes in different locations in each tank. There is also a thermometer that measures temperature in the middle of your liquid and your grain bed. Then you have strike water in exact quantities into your hot liquor tank. Set your temperature controller to the appropriate temperature for your strike water. And set your burner to auto. Open your valves. And turn on your pump. And the hot liquid is coming out of the bottom of the kettle and being reproduced through the top of the kettle, being measured by this RTD sensor. Right now we're set for 156, and that's why it just turned off. So the 156 water is coming up and through. When you get to your strike temperature, you will already have your grain in your mash tun. The system is designed to go in from the bottom up. However, you can go in any way you like. What we do is we shut off our pump, we backfill a little air and close our valve so nothing siphons out when we disconnect. Disconnect our hose, attach it to our mesh tun, turn our pump on, and open our valve to a desired flow rate. For mashing in, you can bring all the water over as quickly as you want. There's a restart hose that comes into the bottom of the grain bed, so the water fills from the bottom up. Once you've transferred all of your liquid, again, shut your pump off. Close your valve, back drain your liquid first, close your valve, set your hose back over, at this point you can do a protein rest, you can do however you like to brew. Mash your, uh, stir your mash at this point. Bring your restart hose over. Pull the restart hose from inside the kettle that was at the bottom of the grain bed to the top of the grain bed. Open your valves. Turn your burner on to auto. And now at this point, you're introducing water from the bottom of the grain bed, which is now work, back into the top of the grain bed, and it is recycling through the water. You can set your flow rates any way you'd like them. Depending on how fast you want to restart. You don't want to do it from this side, you want to do it from the pump side. And the burner is set to automatic. 
we're measuring the temperature out here at the bottom of the kettle. That is on the control panel. And then we also have a thermometer in the middle of your mash. The control will work to even those two temperatures. Once they are even, you have a perfectly even temperature throughout your mash. Yeah, the burner is on at this moment, and now it's off. It's working to even up those temperatures. I will shut this off. Once you have done your 60 minute mash, or the mash of your choice, you have now, during your mash, you've added your sparge liquid into your hot liquor tank and you've heated that up to 168 degrees, 170 degrees, however hot you like the sparge at. And at that point, what we will do is make sure our valves are closed, we back fill the hoses, we'll transfer this hose to the boil kettle, and once again, the hose from the hot liquor tank over to the mash tun. At that point, I can start bringing liquid over on top of the grain bed, and that's going to be my 168 degree liquid. Once I start my flow, it's now measuring temperature. We can actually flip the burner back on auto. It'll turn on and turn off as needed. Let's set this to 158. 68, excuse me. Here you have a flow meter. What this does is measures your liquid transfer in gallons per minute. So, depending on the amount of liquid you want to sparge with, or you have to sparge with, depending on your recipe, this allows you to set your sparge time. I like to sparge for an hour. You can sparge for however long you like. Take the amount of liquid, divide it by 30, and that's going to give you your, your gallons per hour. And what we want to do is get liquid from here to here in a half an hour, and that's the 30 we're dividing by. We set our flow rate accordingly. And then at the same time, once we get, get a little bit of liquid over our grain bed, we will turn on the left pump, and we'll just even out the flow. So the liquid coming out the bottom of your mash tun is now being introduced into the boil kettle. And that process will take an hour. At this point, we've turned off our mash tun burner, and the hot liquid that's coming from here at 168 degrees, which is being measured right at the entrance to the mash tun. So we know we're getting exactly 168 degree water on the top of our grain bed. That process will take completely an hour. We can take readings, we can stop the flow of liquid into the boil kettle to take a reading. And then we can, if we're, our readings are a little high, we can turn some flow back on, it's a little low. We can add a little uh, DMA, but I don't think we want to do that. If your calculations are done correct, the amount of water that is in that kettle should wind up in this kettle, and you should keep your numbers dead on. At that point, you will boil for 60, 90 minutes, do your hop additions into the included hop spider, so that you don't get the hop trub or any other additions that you're looking to do into your hot work. Once you're done boiling, you can now transfer through a plate chiller or a chiller of your choice into your fermenter. That is the run through of the Wartmonster system.